So we just got done looking at a production possibilities curve with coal versus wildlife, and that was with a set amount of resources, set amount of land, set amount of coal deposits. We're going to look at a different scenario with the bear family, and eventually we're going to add a labor resource. We're going to add Goldilocks, and so you're going to see how the curve can move when we add more resources. So suppose that there are three bears living in a family, mama bear, papa bear, baby bear, and their total joy in life comes from eating salmon and berries. They catch salmon in a nearby river, gather the berries in the forest. Each day they have only so much time to fish and gather, and during that time they're not as equally productive as illustrated below. So if mama bear spends all her time fishing, she can catch only two salmon in a day. You can see that there. If she spends all of her time gathering berries, she would collect six pounds. Now what we're going to want to do here is take a look at what's the best that the family could do if they were getting salmon for the entire day. So we're going to add them up. All right? Papa bear can get four, mama bear can get two, baby can get one. So all of them together could get seven salmon in a day. All right? That's if they spent all day fishing for salmon. So we're going to record that down on this t-chart a schedule that I provided for you for the family so they can get seven salmon in a day and if they do that then they cannot get any berries. So there are some other options they can get the rest of the way. In a day they could get six salmon in a day, they could get five, they could get four, all the way down to zero. If they wanted to spend all day gathering berries they could do that and so that's the next thing we have to look at is how many pounds of berries could the family gather in a day if they decide they didn't want any salmon. So if we go back over to our chart and we look at pounds of berries gathered, see Papa's got two, Mama's got six, Baby's got four. We add them up, you get 12. So 12 pounds of berries is the best that the family can do. So you'll see here, here we go, we'll put a 12 down. Next, what we're going to have to do is figure out, well, who's the best family member to go get one salmon? If the family only wants one and they want to spend the rest of the day gathering berries, which family member should get that first salmon? In order to do that, we've got to calculate what's the opportunity cost. In other words, how many pounds of berries does a worker give up, a bear give up, when they go and catch a salmon? So there's a little bit of math involved here. I'm going to set it up. Papa Bear, when he goes, he can get four salmon in a day with all of his time, or he can go get two pounds of berries. So if I want to know how much it costs for one salmon, I just divide both sides by four, so then I'm calculating one salmon for Papa Bear is the equivalent of going out the amount of time it takes him to get a half a pound of berries. So that's the opportunity cost, so a half pound of berries for each salmon that he gets. If you look at Mama Bear, and getting the numbers off the chart, Mama Bear can get two salmon in a day, or she can gather six pounds of berries or some combinations in between. But we want to know what does it cost for one salmon. So for her, two salmon is the equivalent of six pounds of berries. We want to isolate the salmon, reduce it down to one, so we divide by two. And so we find that mama's cost, six divided by two, is three pounds of berries. That's the amount of berry gathering she gives up when she goes to get a salmon. And then our third family member, baby bear, probably the easiest to calculate because baby bear can only get one salmon in a day, so it takes baby all day to go get that salmon. And so it forfeits the opportunity to go and gather four pounds of berries. So baby bear is the most costly, greatest opportunity cost to go get salmon. So really baby bear is the last person, or last person, last bear we would want to send to get a salmon because it costs the family the most. Papa bear, clearly at a half pound of berries, is the least costly. So we want Papa Bear to get as many salmon as he can and then once he cannot get any more then if they need more salmon then Mama Bear is going to be the next to get it and then lastly Baby Bear. So when Papa Bear goes to get that first salmon the family gives up a half a pound of berries. So Papa Bear goes gets that salmon then he comes back and gathers berries. Mama and Baby Bear are getting their uh, full amount of berries in a day so Papa Bear can get up to four salmon in a day. And each salmon that he gets means the family gets one half pound less of berries. Okay. So that's what we've deducted. Now Mama Bear would be the next bear, remember, if we wanted to get five salmon in a day. And remember, she gives up three pounds of berries when she gets one. So uh, they can only get seven or they can get four if she goes to get two of them. Right? These are the two salmon that Mama Bear gets. 
Um, highlighting next would be the four salmon that Papa Bear can get. And then Baby Bear gets the last one. The family gives up four pounds of berry gathering. So this is a nice way for us to double check and make sure that we got it right is that when it goes from four to zero, that should be the opportunity cost of Baby Bear. And it is. So if you're doing this and you find that when you go from uh, your previous to the last number and it, and it isn't the same, like if the opportunity cost was three salmon and you had four left over, then that would be wrong and you'd want to go back in and recalculate. So now we're going to take the numbers off the schedule. We're going to plot them out on the graph for each salmon. This is the best that the family can do, just like we did in Cole versus Wildlife. And then we'll connect the dots, create our production possibilities curve. And you'll see then this is the best at the edge there. This is the best that the family could do at each possible combination. Now, I'm going to pause it here in a moment because we'll talk about feasible. And I guess I'm not going to pause it quite yet versus not feasible. Now I'm going to pause it. So what you see in here, the family could do this. If they wanted to get one salmon and only six pounds of berries in a day, that could easily be done. Right? In fact, they'd probably have extra time left over, and so the graph showing us they're not being as productive as they could be. Right? The best they could do if they wanted one salmon was they could go all the way to getting 11 and a half pounds of berries. So businesses could use something like this to look at, well, what's the best possible combination of outcomes that we could have? Because when businesses are operating inside of here, it means that they're not doing as well as they could be. They want to push it out to here. As individuals, we do that with our time, too. We sometimes have trade-offs where we think about what should we do with our time, and we waste time, and if we waste time, well, then it's probably we're finding our productivity somewhere in here. If we're utilizing all of our time, we're pushing ourselves out to there. So your task is going to be to look at part two, and suppose that New Age Goldilocks comes along, and instead of eating and uh, food and sleeping in their bed, she's going to join the family so she can become one with nature. She's Zen Goldilocks. So she can catch two salmon in a day up to that or gather four pounds of berries. So if you added her to that chart, we've got to calculate what is her opportunity cost. And I'm helping you set it up here. I'm going to use green for Goldilocks. And so for her, two salmon is the equivalent of four pounds of berries. So you need to calculate her opportunity cost and then figure out where she fits in with the family. So that's your first task is going to be calculating that. And then you're going to also need to reconstruct this schedule or t-chart with the new numbers adding Goldilocks. Okay, So there's going to be a new number of salmon that the family can get, a new number of berries. And we'll start you out with that. And they can get 9 instead of 7. right? So any possible combination between 0 and 9 for salmon can happen. numbered out there. Probably should have zero as well. And then our berries is going to increase too. Since Goldilocks can get four pounds of berries, that means the family could get up to 16 pounds in a given day. But now you need to calculate who goes to get which salmon and how many pounds of berries can they get, creating their PPF. Who can do the best? So this is what I'll be grading, is looking at can you Fill in the blanks there, and afterwards, can you take the numbers that you have in your schedule now and plot them on the graph like is shown before? So there'll be a new curve, and it should be pushed out further than the old one. So really, when I grade this, I first look at the new curve that you draw on the graph, and if it looks like it's really off to me, then I probably will go down to your schedule and see if there was a mathematical mistake made or a calculated mistake made. So. Uh, wish you good luck on this activity, and of course use Schoology to contact me if you have any questions.